one of the things that people have a, a big issue with, and I understand it, is when when people are sick and in pain, it seems very cruel. Like, how could God do that to us? I mean, I've been sick before and mad at God. I mean, I believe God exists, so therefore I guess I can be mad at God. Um, wondering how God could be so cruel. I mean, look at all these, these poor creatures. And it's, I understand that. I had a had a brother-in-law, had as in past terms. The guy has got a lot of faults. I'll be the first to say that. He's a he's an Englishman, came over from England, obviously. Typically that's what an Englishman would be, right? And was, you know, part of our family, got married to one of my sisters, and actually for a certain amount of time, I really, really enjoyed hanging out with that guy. He was a great, fun guy. I believed at the time, anyway, he was a really good friend, and, you know, back in the, when I was a kid, they both opened their home to me and allowed me to attend college you know, and be a, be a freeloader for a while. And I, and, I, and I still appreciate that, I do. However, the way the world works, things change and things changed. And so that, you know, that, that all happened and he's no longer my brother-in-law. Oh yeah, we got some wind today. Well, there's a storm coming in. We've got a winter storm coming. So, but it's still nice that it, it's a bit warm today. So this guy, one day he told me that he, he heard all the screams of all the animals that had died. I'm assuming what he meant by that was all the animals were killed so that so that people could eat right and from that day on he became a vegan well i completely understand i feel terrible for animals. I I, re I have very high regard for animals and I eat animals and I think that we have to eat animals. I think that when we decide we are going to buck against nature that we are just being stupid. I mean that we are, there are some things you can change and some things you can't change. However, Going back to this, full, this this idea that everything is permissible, but not everything is advisable, I think it's certainly, and it's, it's a fact, God, if God exists, gave us the ability, because we have this ability to do any, everything, everything we can do, anything we can do, but at the same time, not everything is advisable. And so, thinking about that statement, right? Maybe the thing that isn't advisable is bad for us or bad for someone else. You know, maybe we're being stingy and, and taking from someone else or doing damage to somebody else or to ourselves. So, he became a vegan and he had every right to become a vegan, and I understand why. I sympathize with him, even to the, even to this day, considering the things that happened, which I won't get into. But I still sympathize with him about that, because animals 
are God's creatures also. And, and I believe that, that they have a right to live because they're here. I mean, that's obviously the case. I also believe that if we look at how nature works, it's somewhat of an example that is that, I mean, obviously it works a certain way. We can see how it works and we see that the idea of killing another creature to eat it is not is not a new idea and it's not even a human idea we are the benefactors of whatever came before us the way this world was built and the way this world works and that's the way that this world works and you can't get around that that's not to say you have to agree to it that's also not to say that if you disagree that that maybe that that your actions taken under that thought would be advisable or not you know we we kind of we have the ability to ride our own way whatever it is if you want to be a vegetarian that you have the ability to do that if you want to become a militant vegan and annoy the hell out of everybody in your life and also hate strangers because they don't do or believe as you do, you you can do that too. Everything's permissible. <laughs> so not everything's advisable. We have a conscience. That's another thing that that people on the other side of this philosophy love to disagree with. They think that a conscience well, they know. Here's the thing. They know they've got a conscience. But they like to tell themselves that, oh, it's just conditioning. Oh, this is just conditioning. We don't have a conscience. There's no right or wrong. Yet, they know that there's a right or wrong. Just take something from them. You know, be a thief. Make them do something they don't want to do. And it, it doesn't take long at all to, to um, rub that fa facade of, of um, unawareness that they, that they it's so hard to cultivate. It's easy to get rid of that. So we know this, they know this, they know we know this, they still act like it's not a thing. Again, everything's permissible, not everything is not maybe advisable. So in other words, we're responsible for what we do, right? And so this guy became a very belligerent, annoying vegan. He also did some other things which I think are quite funny. That, well, you know, I, I really, I don't, I don't find, or I don't take pleasure in humiliating people for the sake of humiliation. But there might be a time when these stories that I'm thinking of, how this guy utterly humiliated himself might be useful to talk about, but not today. I don't think I want to do that. Anyway. So he became this very annoying, very annoying vegan person. He annoyed everyone around him with it. And I find that it seems to me that if people don't have some basis in believing in God, for a lack of a better way to put it, if they don't have some kind of belief that that works that way that that they're sort of lost people 
they're going to drift. They, they, they like they don't have an anchor, maybe. You know, they just there's just something missing. Again, I mean, it's whatever you want to do, but that's just what I've noticed, and I think that maybe the idea that leftists exhibit a market increase in mental problems might bear that out. And not only that, but this guy basically became a leftist. Uh, I mean, he became, well, I don't know. Yeah, I think he did. He, I think he, I think he embraced that whole philosophy, the anti-God, uh, anti-conservative for, for sure. Anti-meat, environmentalism, I mean, the whole... It seems to me like he, he picked up on a lot of that stuff. So... This is right. And from what I've seen, it certainly hasn't helped him at all. And I believe that when you're a militant baby, why there's a road. Yeah. And the road. When the roads get like this, you damn near have to speed up to put up with them. You can float over this crap. I would have hoped that the county did a better job cleaning this road up, but there's, this road is full of washboards. Whoever came out here and did this, Oh, look at this. There was some serious flooding going on here. Interesting. Wow. That culvert was probably iced up or, or yeah, this, this road was closed. Well, I wouldn't have driven through it. So where was I at? I kind of lost my train of thought, the road the bumps in the road through me, and then the, the that flooding, which will certainly, I mean, could, could certainly be an issue this year. Anyway, so this guy, yeah, he was a, an annoying vegan. Still, probably still is, I don't know. But It's, I understand, to get back to the point, yeah, I disagree with a lot, most everything, actually. I think when you turn your back on, on nature, which is what vegans do, that it, it's, I think it's a harder life for you all around. Because at that point, you pretty much are going to be relying on eating carbohydrates. And carbohydrates are awful, an awful source of, of energy. Yet that's the source of energy that our government pushes. But our government also, we, all, we know all what our government has become. You know, look at the Restrict Act. If you haven't heard about that, you need to look into that and you need to make sure that you voice your opinion about that restrict act, because if that act goes into goes in, becomes law, you're going to lose your ability to protest. At that point, I mean, it's it's like communism 2.0. It's terrible. These are our own politicians doing this to us. It's shocking to me that these politicians are such corrupt little weasels. But should it be surprising? Probably not. 
So let me branch, let me walk back off that branch and get back onto this, the vegan is a thing. I think that you, you, I think it's very harmful to acknowledge, well, to not acknowledge reality. But I can understand why people do, because when it comes to, to animals, because animals are, are awesome creatures. You know, we love our animals, but yet we are part of nature and nature is a lot bigger than we are. And we are, we are the benefactors of all this nature, you could say. We are great partners. What, what has happened in nature has happened for millions of years, I believe. And the idea of recycling is actually you can look at it that's a big thing in nature everything recycles however the 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 the, the thing that sticks with people is the fact that that animals eat animals to live they don't really have a choice there are some animals that don't eat animals to live they're they are built to eat carbohydrates and they can we are sort of a, a mix we we can eat carbohydrates and we can survive on them, but it's not, we're not, it's bad for us to do that. If you look at, if you look at the, the rates of cancer, diabetes, and all the popular diseases that we have nowadays, it can pretty much all be traced back to our diet. You are what you eat. I mean, who doesn't, who hasn't heard of that? So. I used to not believe that, by the way. Didn't even think about it. I just thought, well, the government, you know, they know they know best, right? Why would the government lie to us about nutrition? Well, maybe the government is just stupid. You know, the people that, that are supposed to be smart, maybe they're corrupt. They're obviously, there's obviously a problem because all these diseases have basically exploded within the last, what, 80 years or so. And when I was a kid, in school, there were very few fat kids in school. If you were a fat kid in school, you were you were quite interesting to the rest of the kids. Of course, you were probably also picked on because kids are rotten little bastards. But it was very rare that you would see, you know, fat kids in school. And nowadays, you see fat kids everywhere. I mean, you can't deny, you can't deny this. And if you, if you can bury your head in the sand and say, oh, well, that's because of people just being lazy. That's what I used to think, but it's not the case. So anyway, funny how things tie in to things, but to be a vegan, is to eliminate animal fat from your diet. Now you can still get fat, but it's, you know, you, your selection and protein for that matter, but your selection is quite narrow. So yeah, this road is really taking kind of a beating. I expected it to be a little bit better but it isn't, it isn't horrible. It's just not what I would want. So when you make that choice, which is your choice to make, you, you suffer the consequences or you celebrate the success of the choices that you make, so to speak, you know, you, a choice that affects your health will tend to make you either more healthy or less healthy, right? So to suffer and to celebrate might actually not be like a big celebration. It just might be uh, now you're not as healthy. 
or you're more healthy. Wow, this is pretty cool. We're down in, this is Milk Creek. This is a cool little creek. It comes off of Sleepy Cat, which is over to our left. We're actually on the north side of a big, big mesa. And we're getting to, to go around the west side of that big mesa. And we'll be going over Yellow Jacket Pass. In fact, we're starting, I guess you could say we're, we're starting up Yellow Jacket Pass, I suppose unofficially right here. We're no longer in Moffat County, we're in Rio Blanco County. And let me tell you, that river, well, that creek looks like a river. You know, for comparison, the Colorado River in the winter isn't as big, up high. Of course, I'm cherry picking right now, as that creek is. That creek is, is going for it. So, and it's going to be doing that for a couple months now. I mean, there's a lot of water up here. Anyway, I guess I, I guess I, I'm pretty much done talking about that guy. But like I said, he was a great guy. He has changed. I mean, literally physically changed since he became a vegan, I believe. And he is not the same person that he was. And he was a great person. And I don't, I don't know the guy now. And I don't know that I really want to. I don't know that, 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 that he would even be a logical person anymore because he used to be. So anyway, I noticed from my own experience the difference between my not quite sure how to how to put this but <laughs> since I cut carbohydrates Carbohydrates are a small, small portion of my diet nowadays. I eat a lot of meat and a lot of dairy. And when I talk about dairy, it's usually the high fat stuff. I, I don't really drink milk anymore. The, I'll drink half and half like I used to drink milk, if I have to drink milk, for instance, I, if I'm traveling and I'm going to, to, to buy something out of a convenience store to drink, it's going to at least be half and half. That is really low carb, high fat. So anyway, my ratio of carbohydrates to fat has drastically changed. And since I since I started doing this, I lost a lot of weight. I wasn't intending on losing weight. I didn't really care. But the weirdest side effect that I've experienced personally is that I am much more of a male by the way, I, I quit the seed oils and all of that stuff. I, I don't do any of that. And I don't really particularly like vegetables, although I used to love potatoes, but basically in the form of potato chips. And so I, I've, I've given all that up. But I've become more of a male since I have changed my, my diet. And I'm an older guy. But I might as well not be, in the sense that, that, I, I mean, I'm trying to explain this right, but I'm just more of a male than, than I was. I'll, well, I'll put it this way. I notice females a lot more 
than I did a couple of years ago. And a couple of years ago, I made the assumption that, oh, I got a bug or two over here, oh wow. Let's see if I can get rid of those. Probably a little on the, I'm not sure what I could do. Oh, I'm not even touching it. No. I made the assumption that, like everything else that was happening in, in my, you know, physically to me, it was just aging, and it was, that's all it was. That I was just, like, losing interest in, 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 you know, sex, right? Losing interest in sex. But I now understand that these things that I thought about my daughter, about just aging, were incorrect. For instance, I was using more and more, um, um, uh, what do you call this stuff? Yeah, no, I'm not going to say Viagra. That's not what I mean. Uh, psyllium fiber, right? I was going down that road. I was eating, and I found out my digestion was just getting harder to, it was just getting less effective year to year. And I, I thought, well, my dad went through this, and so I'm just aging, I'm my dad's son, and so more than likely, it's just, just aging. But when I changed my diet, without getting into in depth about that, and now having lived with this changed diet i've had these these changes marked changes in my you know in, in, in my body in my in, in my day-to-day -day being i guess i don't know how do you say it my physical form <laughs> i'm really getting lost right now trying to talk about this but i've but there are changes and part of the changes were I didn't need that fiber stuff anymore. My digestion worked really good. And also, I became more of a guy. Now, I will say this, you know, that the, the man boob thing. Well, a couple of years ago, I was like looking at my, at my chest and I, I'm not really, really, I, I was never really fat, but I was looking at, looking at my chest thinking, you know, I'm going to bear. I got some man boobs going on here. Not big, but I mean, eerily noticeable as far as I was concerned. And I didn't like that. Unlike other people in this world who, who uh, I can think of a Dylan character who, who thinks that's a great thing. Fine, everything's permissible. That's what you want to do. Although I think Anheuser Busch might be regretting, <laughs> regretting their their hiring practices. If nothing else, maybe a little bit more than they used to be. So I, I might link that up later on. Yeah, we're getting up to we're probably about eight, no, well, seventy five hundred feet. I think we we're around eight thousand feet up the top here. So it's not a really high pass, but it's this is the access to uh, the Sleepy Cat and the access to the west side of the flat tops. It's a very cool area. So anyway, I noticed all these changes. And part of it was that my little, my little man boob experiment seemed to go away. Where did they go? I don't know, but they went away. And at the same time, I want to drive slowly so I don't pick up too much mud. Yeah. And at the same time, my interest in women reignited, reappeared. It hadn't gone away completely, but it had definitely gone away. And quite honestly, I'm happy with that. I have, I would rather occupy my mind with things other than women. 
And when I say that, I'm not knocking women at all. It's just that as guys, we spend a lot of our lives thinking about women. Another one of those inconvenient facts that the left doesn't want people to, to understand or think about, but it's a nature thing. So, it's just very simply the way that, the way that the world works. That sex thing that works throughout every living creature is what keeps this world going. You know, for animals and plants, every living thing as some form of procreation. And and as a kid, I, I focused on that quite a bit. I thought that was a, an interesting thing. Like pretty much every other guy. For that matter, probably like every other girl. Like every person. So, I kind of wonder too, when I think about that, if one of the reasons that the left is so entirely severe and, and insane, really, is, I think, to break your natural urges, I think it requires a lot of energy. And I think that you need to be able to, to blow enough bullshit into the people that you're turning into leftists that the illogical BS that you're feeding them fills their minds up so completely that they're able to to push down their natural instinct And maybe they're even able to turn that natural instinct into something quite unnatural. I don't know. You gotta wonder. Because to, to push that kind of an urge out of somebody takes a lot of force. and adds credibility to the idea that no matter what we think about all these primal emotions we have, belief is even the stronger emotion that we have because we're able, apparently people are able to push down all that other stuff for the pursuit of a belief. We are now going down Coal Creek Canyon. And this is a really pretty valley. In the fall, you should see this. It's just, it's awesome. This is probably its ugliest. And I still like it. Not only is this a cool drive, but this is also a shortcut to Meeker. Not kidding, it's a shortcut. Time wise we're not gonna gain much today because I was I had to drive slowly. But we gain But we save miles, so Wow. Car had a bit of a windshield issue. I guess that this conversation 
really wouldn't be complete without talking about the Dylan, the Dylan M situation where a woke 30 something business gal, probably probably mainly trained in gender studies and, and all the other things that the constitute HR departments and businesses decided to reignite the beer drinking public by ignoring every one of their customers who Tim Pool and his crew were right on the money with this. So I'm, I'm quite impressed. She's going to save Bud Light. This is the, the theory, right? By bringing on a newer, younger drinker. By the way, a drinker. We're going to get younger people hooked on alcohol. Hmm. That seems funny to begin with. But at the same time, we are going to turn our backs on our current crop of drinkers aged between, let's be realistic, 17 and probably 95. Let's get rid of those people so we can get this new crop of drinkers. And who would those be? They would be the transgender crowd. How old are they? Well, we figured they are probably one. Let's be honest. 15 maybe, 14 to maybe 20, maybe. So I'm not sure where this girl learned her statistics. Oh, that was a big old rock, folks. That was a big one. I'm not sure where this girl learned about statistics. And maybe statistics is just way too complicated for me to figure it out. So I'm just sticking with really simple math because that seems to be what, what I am comfortable with. If you have, what do you figure? Maybe one half of 1% of the population that doesn't abhor, find transgenderism abhorrent. Can I use that word? I am that in that crowd of people, those people who aren't the college professors that are pushing the bullshit are the, sadly, the victims of these college professors who, for whatever reason, have fell into the trap and believe that stuff. That is the crowd that this 30 something woke college indoctrinated businesswoman, don't forget businesswoman, is going for. And she's going to save Anheuser-Busch. And I saw enough of that clip that Anheuser-Busch promoted. This Dylan Mulvaney dude with his Apparently, his surgery, which has given him some female-looking attributes, wearing a dress, a wig, I don't know, a female haircut, a lot of makeup on, doing cutesy, girlish things for the camera, and just being weirdly cutesy grimacing really is, is a way that I saw it. That thing creeped me out. That was creepy. That was actually creepier than at one point I I was watching a YouTube video was some medical thing. And when I realized that the people were 
opening up a cadaver and showing internal organs, I was creeped out. That was very creepy. It was very unnecessary, too. I, I, I don't understand why they felt the need to do this. It was just creepy. Well, the Dylan Mulvaney video was much creepier than that. And on several more levels, you know, the cadaver thing was creepy, but not, it wasn't like all encompassing creepy. It was just creepy. Now, this is interesting. I'm doing about 50 right now. Now I have a, a local coming up behind me. Well, I have obviously more than 50. I'm assuming that he'll probably, oh, I'm going to be doing it in seconds. Uh, I don't want them to hit me. There you go. Let them go around me. You never saw them, but they would have passed me. Not why what would have been cool for you to see that I mean, people are passing me on dirt roads. Yeah, that was creepy. And if you saw it, if you saw that, that Dylan Mulvaney thing, I don't know how anybody wouldn't be creeped out by that. That was, it was despicable, you know, it was, well, it was, it was cringy, maybe is a better word. It was, it's hard to describe how yucky that was but it was like i need to take a bath after seeing that i just feel dirty all over i've got to clean this yuck off me it was it was it's just something you didn't you don't want to see and so i only watched just a tiny bit of it and i it was very creepy and i i stopped it And what I realized by that very cringy display was that if you're a leftist, you are the first, you are among, anyway, the first victims of leftism. I feel bad for that guy. I do. I mean, that that's horrible. I don't know how you wouldn't have mental problems if, yeah. So, but that's what leftism does. I mean, leftism destroys everything. It's interesting how it destroys, it destroys its own base pretty much always and pretty much first. When you watch how, the, you know, how communism works, that's usually what happens. They'll destroy their base first then they go after the people. I mean, they, you know, it's a pecking order. I suppose it's probably easiest to destroy your followers first. And it's not so easy to destroy the people that are gonna shoot back. Maybe that's why leftists are that way. Or well, leftism as a philosophy is that way. Basically, pure evil. If you distill leftism, that's what you end up with. You end up with evil. Obviously, in my humble opinion, horses seem to be liking the weather today here. This is a neat little schoolhouse. I think it's a schoolhouse. 
Yeah, or a church. I don't think it's a schoolhouse. We are now in the White River Valley. The White River is one of those really, really pretty rivers most of the time. It's clear, really crystal clear. And there aren't all that many rivers that are that way in Colorado. The Uncompahgre River down down south in the southwest of the state is one of those rivers. The White River is one of those really crystal clear rivers. They're really interesting. The Yampa River, on the other hand, is a big muddy mess. And it's it's a silt laden river. And I guess it probably stands to reason that the geology that the river is, is running through is going to make the river what it is. Basically, you are what you eat, right? So if you eat mud, you're going to be mud if you're a river or creek. If you don't eat mud as a river or a creek, you won't be, you'll be clear. So this is a more more washed area I know, is probably a good way to put it. In fact that these hills that are around us right now, a lot of these hills are sedimentary. There's piles of sedimentary material. Not all of them, but most of them. It means that most of this ground has been washed, you know. By, by a river. There must have been one hell of a river that came through here at one point. Off to our left is, is the flat tops. And if we were to continue down this road, we would actually we would actually go up the White River Canyon, White River Valley maybe would be a better way to call it. We would go up to, up up onto the flat tops and eventually be up near Trapper's Lake and really beautiful road and beautiful country. I understand why wealthy people like to live out here in this valley. It's secluded, it's beautiful, it's it's a very nice place and the flat top wilderness area is awesome the flat tops is awesome it's a really just a beautiful place you know it's, it's one of those places that those of us who believe in god well maybe not all of us but maybe some of us who believe in god think maybe god likes this place because it's so neat <laughs> But we're actually going back, we're going into Meeker. And I'm not sure if I've taken you this way. I like these barns. Those barns have been around for a while. And at this point, I don't want to show up to my appointment until the high school kids have all got their crap and left. I don't like kids anymore. I stay away from kids. They are, they are, they are, well, sadly, they are just being bombarded with, with garbage and lies in the school systems. And it's happening everywhere. It's been happening for a long time. A lot of those kids will will make it through and understand that they were fed lies by their teachers. Some of those kids will not. 
some of those kids will be the converts. And that's a shame. It's a shame that, that it was, well, you know, it happened. How do you, how do you put this? Because people can say, well, you conservatives let it happen. Well, we did. But we didn't realize that it was happening. We knew that there was the, the philosophy out there. And we talked about it. And we tried to do things politically that would stop it. In other words, voting. But the left has got a lot of power and they, they have moved in while we weren't looking, really. I mean, so yes, we might have been able to stop it, but maybe not. Looking back, I want, I think it's, I think things happen the way that they're supposed to happen really at the end of the day because even though we may not be in control because we aren't no matter what steve Turley says the democrats the leftists are not panicking they're reveling they're getting their way like never before and i'm not the only person that has noticed that i'm glad to say and i like steve Turley, but he is he is wrong <clears throat> I, I think maybe he wants to promote optimism, but I also think that sometimes you need to be honest. And Steve Turley is a bit of a salesman. So it might be that, that in his heart, the desire to make money is pretty strong also. And maybe that conflicts with his idea of being truthful about what hap what is happening in the world. But maybe he genuinely doesn't see it. Maybe he genuinely believes that the left is on the ropes and that any moment now they're going to collapse. Now, I, I certainly don't see that. I do believe, though, that you know, me talking about this does make it seem worse than it is. Anyone talking about a problem will give you that appearance, right? If you're talking about an issue, you might think, well, why, why is that such a big, big deal to them? Well, maybe it's not that big of a deal to them, but it's a, a big enough deal to talk about it. And I think that a person can be misled by just that. So. And this is definitely one of those conversations that just keeps branching off and going further and further. And all I can say is, I it's just kind of how it is. Because at this point, my mind has gone to the Restrict Act. What I know of this, this, I hope, pending, not enacted piece of legislation is that it is probably probably if you were to take this legislation put it in a gigantic beaker because i think it's what five thousand pages long like all this bullshit that our government feeds us well if it's so long well then we're not going to be expected to read it how can we be expected to read it what a ridiculous excuse and that's why they do it well that so they can cover every base too especially on something like this if you were to distill that 5,000 page document down into a giant beaker, a giant distillery, you'd have a gigantic piece of bullshit. That's what you would have. And anything else that would be draining off of that bullshit would be pure evil. Would the evil be a liquid or would it be a solid? I really don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not that great of a chemist. 
So, no, I don't know if the evil is liquid or solid. It's probably a gas. So, anyway. Why a gas? Well, words are made out of gas, right? I mean, in, in some sense. Words float through gas. So that seems pretty evil. So, the resist act looks to me like the return of the Gestapo in Germany. But the Gestapo is coming to our country. What I can see about the Resist Act is that it, for all of its whatever is supposed to be stopping TikTok, which it actually doesn't even mention, so I'm told, but that's the that's the, the Trojan horse of it, right? Oh, it stops TikTok. Well, what it actually does is it stops everyone in this country from saying anything bad about this government. More specifically, the people in power right now. That's what this bill is intended to do. It will bring what was a, a quarter of a million dollar fine civilly or a million dollar fine criminally and up to 20 years in prison for you expressing your opinion. But the clever lawyers, right? Because these people may not be smart, but they're definitely clever. They're saying, oh, what you're not, what you're doing. It's not a freedom of speech thing. You're giving aid and comfort to a foreign entity. And the way they describe giving aid and comfort is if you transmit any data in any way. Now, I could stretch that out to mean whatever I do when I'm communicating with somebody is I'm transmitting data or receiving data. And that's basically, I think, what they want. They want it that open-ended. They want to be able to go into your Facebook account, to police YouTube, to police Rumble, to go into your cell phone Look at your browsing history. Look at your emails. And then an unelected bureaucrat, who obviously wouldn't be a woke person, obviously wouldn't be somebody with an agenda, right? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Or is it wink, wink, nudge, nudge? Obviously, that can be, you know, what bad could happen there? Giving the power basically of life or death to an unelected bureaucrat that's like behind the curtain pulling wires. That couldn't be bad. How could that go wrong, right? This is what the Restrict Act is all about. It's about stifling one political party so that communism can flourish in this country. And what does flourishing communism mean to for us? It means poverty, suffering and death that's what it means we know this this is not a this is not a, a this is not a a um, prophecy this is looking at what has happened every time communism has been allowed to flourish like this and this is exactly what these people want that's what they're doing so I would suggest to you, if you value freedom and you value your freedom of speech, that you get educated on this resist act. And I would suggest quickly. And any Democrat that has still got control of logic and any Republican who still has control of logic and understands logic and uses logic needs to fight, viciously fight against this thing. I'm not sure how, what kind of, what kind of um, chances this thing has. I have no idea, but 
I'm telling you, it is bad. It is, it is bad. And I think I'm going to end this. I, I was also thinking about talking about Trump's popularity since this kangaroo court, which will become common, by the way. If the Resist Act happens, that is what our legal system is going to look like. People getting, using the term trumped up. What an interesting thought. That's what our legal system will become. You know, so just be prepared if that happens. The people, the point I wanted to make is that, oh, people are saying, well, look at the popularity of Trump. He's going to win this next election. He's certainly going to win the Republican nomination. Well, and here's where I have a bit of an issue with, with Steve Turley. Steve Turley seems to have forgotten what happened in 2020 and 2022. And for that matter, in 2018. And for that matter, what was attempted in 2016. And so I would say, come on, Steve Turley, I like you, but you need to be honest. You need to, you need to sober up, man. If you think, my personal opinion on this is if, if anyone thinks Trump is actually going to get elected, they got another thing coming and I'm going to vote for the guy, but I have absolutely no faith that my vote's going to count or that your vote's going to count because that's exactly what the left is going to do. I don't see anybody stopping them. Any, well, I'll take that back. There is a movement among the right, and it's a sad thing to see, where they are basically doing what the left has been doing, some of what the left has been doing. In order to counteract that, I gotta look at the creek. Let's look at the river real fast. I don't think that's going to be enough. So, but the fact that they're, the fact that some action is happening is a good sign, but I really don't think, I guess the term would be too little too late. That's how I feel about it. I would love to be wrong, but I don't see, I don't see where, where, there is a way forward for any conservative in a majority of the states in our country because they have been taken over by this illegal mob of criminals that do whatever it takes by any means necessary, right? That's their big term to grab power. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps. So the river's up a little over a foot from two weeks ago. I think the lady just lost a, I'm watching it. I was watching that lady eating and the wind gust blew all of her napkins away. And I laughed about it, but I don't actually mean that I thought it was funny. So I'm, I'm sadly, pessimistic about that. And I like Trump. I think Trump is the guy. So who knows? I will add this to this though. If I were, if I were the leftists, as and the way that I see it is that the Democrats on the left, the people that are pushing this rotten agenda are getting their way every time. It's like, it's almost like like the January 6 cops in DC opening up the White House, ushering the people in, trapping them in a crime and then throwing them in prison when they did not do any of the bullshit they're supposed to have done. I would, if I were a leftist, I would start feeling that way about the ease at which they are pushing their message. It is almost like someone has opened up the, de the door for them and is giving them unfettered access to do whatever they like. I don't know where that leads, but if I were a leftist, I would be a little jumpy about that. Well, anyway.
My friends, I have said my piece. I have shown you some cool sights today. I hope you enjoyed them. If you stay to the end of the video, well, I appreciate it. If you, if you jumped earlier, well, you don't hear me talking about this, but I still, thanks for, thanks for watching and I'll go do my thing and, um, I'll see you next time. Bye.